So just how much of a landmark ruling is Mark Shuttleworth's uh, victory against our state? Yesterday, the Supreme Court said the Reserve Bank must pay back all the money that Shuttleworth paid in terms of an exit tax on his assets, which was about 10% of his South African assets, plus interest. Now, Shuttleworth has been scathingly critical of South Africa's exchange controls, and he said that he was paying the tax under protest in 2009. That was years after he had immigrated to the Isle of Man. The amount is... Uh, now owing back to him about 300 million rand. The billionaire IT entrepreneur immediately released a surprising blog yesterday saying he would put all that money back into a trust to help those who can't afford to approach the constitutional court in cases against the state. Well, to discuss, we're now joined by Norton Rose's head of tax, Andrew Wellstead. Great to have you with us, Andrew. You. Um, w was this a surprise? I'm sure everyone was, was following this case, especially tax experts. Was it surprising to you that he, he won and and then said, OK, I'm going to give the money back. Well, what was a little surprising, the case had been heard before in the High Court, and the High Court said that the government could keep the levy, couldn't have anything back. And then the second aspect of the case was they ruled certain sections of the current um, ex-con regime to be unconstitutional. The Supreme Court of Appeal took the diametrically opposite view. They said, well, we're not looking at the constitutionality issue, and I'll come back to that a bit later, but the levy was um, invalid at the time, mm. so that must be returned to him. So it was interesting. I think on the levy, um, the Supreme Court of Appeal's reasoning um, seems cogent to me. Um, but it was a big step by the Supreme Court of Appeal, and I'm sure the Reserve Bank would be unhappy with it. Well, well is this the end of the road? Because uh, surely the state can go to the Constitutional Court. He has said he wants this to go to the Constitutional Court, so, so it's firmed up there. Am I correct in that? That's right. So I th I think but that the Concord could make a different decision. That's right. So the, the Concord will be the court of final instance. I, there's nowhere else to go after that. I think that um, the Reserve Bank will be wanting to have the Supreme Court's view of the levy overturned. I, they would like the, the Constitutional Court to rule that, in fact, the imposition of the levy was lawful. And Mr Shuttleworth would like um, the court to look at his, his issues around the constitutionality of certain of the provisions of the exchange control framework a little more closely, which the Supreme Court of Appeal mm. sidestepped. Because he was basically saying that the, the Reserve Bank was acting a bit arbitrarily because this isn't um, legal. It, it wasn't run through our parliament, through our system. It, it was the Reserve Bank coming up with exchange control. So is, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, to put it simply, he was alleging that the levy amounted to a tax and that a tax can't be just imposed arbitrarily by one or other regulator. It has to follow a certain course, which this particular levy didn't do. And that's what the Supreme Court of Appeal agreed with. OK, so, so let's look at the state of exchange controls now, because this exit tax has actually been abolished. That's right. So, but he's still saying that, that South Africa is a very expensive place to do business, that moving across borders is, is very expensive. I had the impression that we had moved to more relaxation. You can take more money out, you can bring more money in. W what is the situation? Look, we certainly have, and for your average South African uh, natural person, exchange control is almost non-existent. You can now take four million per annum out um, very easily, and there are not many South Africans that have a problem. You can do that, yeah, yeah. That's right. So from a natural person perspective, it's not there. Exchange controls are still um, a bit of an administrative burden to business uh, on cross-border transactions, and they still need to be considered. We do a lot of work in the field, and it's something that business... It, it's an impediment to business, if you would call the administrative burden an impediment. That said, um, we, in the financial crisis, when a lot of the international banks got a bit of a hiding because of investments, there were a lot of people who said that because our banking system was protected by exchange controls and there wasn't this free flow of money, it in fact protected our banking system. So, you know, there are views both ways. Um, I, think, I think that there is a large uh, body of the business community that would like to see them abolished to allow for the free flow of cash and to allow business to take its course. So he's not, he's not fighting a, a windmill because we know that a lot of South African companies are listing um, parts, subsidiaries abroad, reorientating abroad, but, but they're raising concerns. I haven't really heard this one raised, raised recently. Or, or is it an investment issue and an impediment to business? 
Well, it's, the levy is definitely not fighting a windmill. There's 2.9 billion that's been collected that arguably stands for people to come and try and get a refund now on the back of the Supreme well, Court. Well, let's talk really. about that because the Supreme Court said they don't think there, there could be a flood of claims. But surely there are very rich people out there thinking about this. Yeah, they, they didn't explain in great detail why they didn't think there, a flood of, there, there would be a flood of claims. Now, there are a couple of reasons. It could be that they're thinking that these claims may have prescribed. It could also be that they lay a lot of emphasis on the fact that he paid, um, noting that he, he didn't agree with the levy and that he was going to challenge it, whereas others may not have. Mm. That but said, surely this will spark a, a possible challenge. I can tell you, if, it, if I had paid a large exit levy, I would certainly be thinking very seriously now about approaching for a refund on the mm. basis of this case. On the constitutionality point, are, are aspects of the exchange control um, framework unconstitutional. The fact that the High Court, when they considered it, spent such a lot of time looking at it and ruled that certain provisions um, are in fact unconstitutional, he certainly doesn't think he's changing, ch chasing a windmill on that. And a High Court has ruled that certain aspects are unconstitutional. So, so finally, just how important do you think this, this victory will be if, if we look at possible changes that, that could take place down the line? Or even this, this three billion rand that, that may have to be paid back or, or parts of it? So what, is, what is the significance? I think the significance is going to be held in abeyance because I've no doubt that it's going to go to the Constitutional Court. Mr Shuttleworth looking at the constitutionality point and the Reserve Bank looking at the amount that they have to refund. For those um, parties that did in fact pay an exit levy, I think they're going to be looking very carefully at, at what happened in the case and how the circumstances in which they paid. And as I say, where a large sum was paid, you can be pretty sure mm. they're going to be chasing it. And, and finally, the, the state of of our openness, because I, I guess that, that consensus, I feel, um, is fading a bit, where we have to be as open as possible. Money should go in and out um, easily. We, companies are moving to, to tax havens. Do you know what I mean? This is something that the world is looking at, and it feels like a lot of people are saying we nations should be able to protect themselves. Yeah, you know, look, I think you know, exchange controls have always been controversial. The truth is that there have been significant relaxations, particularly in last year's medium-term budget. The minister announced a whole lot, raft of changes that didn't get as much sort of airtime as they should have. For companies that are doing business, and particularly South African companies, they used to exchange controls, and they're largely non-existent. If you manage them properly and you put in your reporting at the correct time and you ask for the correct approval, it's actually pretty easy to do business. The real area where we see um, exchange controls being an impediment was foreign investors. They don't understand them. They don't know the regulator. They feel uncomfortable about making disclosures. So that is an area where... So even um, that admin burden you were talking that's about. That's right. You know, non -resident, foreigners like to have investment done on the easiest basis possible. The fewer regulators, fewer reporting, all of those good things um, make the, the investment easier. So they look at a return and they look at the regulatory framework when they're considering an investment. And exchange control is a real red light for foreign investors because, as I say, they don't understand it, they don't like the reporting. It's something that they think shouldn't be there. Um, as to whether or not South Africans, I think, as I said, many South African businesses are on top of exchange control. They manage it. But you can see from Mr. Shuttleworth, there are a lot of South Africans that still think it's an imposition on our ability to be part of the global mm. world. Well, this fight will continue, according to him. And thank you so much for your analysis. Andrew Wellstead from Norton Rose.